This fall, I became a board certified pediatric pharmacy specialist. The entire process to get to test day and to get my exam results was rather intense. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down things like how I studied for the exam, what it was like on test day, and how long it took me to get my results and all the stuff that happened after I got my results as well. I already did a video on how to apply for the exam, so you can check that out if you have not done so already, but I'm just gonna jump into studying. So before I talk about how I studied, I do wanna preface the fact that I was working as a overnight hospital pharmacist at a women's and children's hospital before I took the exam. And so I was the only pharmacist. I had done that for two years as well as doing a PEDS PGY-1. And so there were a lot of areas of this exam that I was confident in going into it. For example, I could probably treat a case of acute otitis media in my sleep. And maybe I have because I do have some weird dreams about working in the hospital. But there were other things that I hadn't done since residency, like I didn't take a cardiology rotation in residency and we didn't have very many cardiology patients. We didn't have a surgeon that did a lot of the um, surgeries for patients with congenital heart defects, especially if they were complicated. Those got transported somewhere else in the hospital I was working at. So I didn't see that very often. We also didn't do pediatric ECMO at the hospital that I was working at on nights, and so I hadn't seen that since residency. So there were things like that and a few other topics that had changed since I was in residency that I just didn't see as often, and those were the things that I was most concerned about focusing on going into the exam and how I was going to study. So for BCPPS specifically, so the pediatric board certification, there are really two main study aids that you can purchase. One is from the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, and the other is from the American College of Clinical Pharmacy. There are a lot of similarities between these two courses, but there are some differences that are gonna help you decide which study tool might be best for you. So ASHP is a presentation-based course. It is their pediatric pharmacy review course, and it is 25 hours of CE credit if you complete the course, and it includes complex cases as well as core therapeutic modules to go over some of the big guidelines out there. It also includes a practice exam that is 110 questions. And then there are a lot of example questions and cases throughout the different presentations and just through the course in general. Now, an important factor here is you're already paying like $600 to take this exam. And if you're like me, you're gonna have to stay in a hotel room and drive a couple hours to get to a test site. So if that's the case, you're already spending quite a bit of money in order to take the test. So how much does this cost? So it's $425 if you are a member of ASHP and $625 if you are not a member of ASHP. However, if you are a new practitioner member of ASHP, you can actually get this for free. So in order to get it for free, you sign up, you take the exam. After you've taken the exam, you are then going to pay $10 a month for your recertification credits. They have like a recertification course and different credits that come out throughout the year in order to meet that 100 hour of CE requirement. So basically you're paying $840 over the course of that seven years to do the review course and to also get their annual review and recertification course after you're done. So you're able to get CE credit, you're able to get recertification credit, so it's a pretty good deal. So ACCP is a little bit different. It has 25.25 credit hours of CE if you do the presentation version of their course, and it also includes a workbook to go along with it. They have over 200 different assessment questions available to you as you go throughout their course, and the price is pretty much the same. So $425 if you're a member of ACCP and $625 if you're not a member of ACCP. They do not have the option for the new practitioner bonus where you get it for free and get the recertification, so that's not an option here. You just have the paid versions. So you can purchase just the online workbook that has the assessment questions and everything in it for $165 if you're a member and $265 if you're a non-member, but this does not include any CE credit. So if you were hoping that your study materials would help you meet your CE requirements for your state license, that's not going to happen here. However, if you're somebody who wouldn't be using the presentations anyway, this could be a really good option. So I personally chose the ASHP one and I did the new practitioner member rate, so I didn't pay anything for that recertification course initially. And I ended up cramming for like three to four weeks. Now, if you happen to watch my NAPLEX video, you know that this is also how I studied for the NAPLEX, and I would like to pretend like I'm not somebody who does this, but I now realize that I am a person who does this. I don't think that is the ideal way to study. It's just 
a lot of things were happening in the lead up to taking my board certification. I changed jobs, so I went from working night shift to day shift in investigational drug service. So I went from a staff pharmacist to a clinical specialist and I was at a new facility. I also went on vacation. I also got invited to do a trip with NASA, which was really cool <laughs> and like highlight of my content creation journey. And then I also had my grandma who needed surgery. And so I took off a weekend of studying to go visit her. I do not regret that. Everything I did leading up to the exam though was really taking away from study time. And it was also just a huge transition period for me. So that was not my plan. It's just kind of how it worked out, but I wanna be really honest with how I went through this. So I crammed in those presentations. So I was doing sometimes like even 30 minutes of a presentation or a full presentation. Most of the ones for um, ASHP are like an hour long. So as I watched the presentation, I printed these out and like bound all of the slide sets. Um, I had two slides per page and then I took notes on the slides as they went through them. And then I also, because I was visiting my grandma and she lived four hours away that weekend, my studying was listening to these presentations and not really having this in front of me. And I chose to listen to the things that I mentioned before that I could typically do in my sleep. Like I listened to an asthma chapter. I listened to one of the neurology sections and the psych sections. I actually did a big presentation on psych meds in residency so that was a good review for me but a lot of that wasn't new information so after I went through all of the presentations I took the practice exam so I do want to note that I took the practice exam with ASHP approximately five days before the exam which was closer to the deadline than I wanted I really wanted to take it about a week and a half out and I ended up scoring a 60.9 percent on the exam which did not thrill me whatsoever I did catch that I made several silly mistakes, probably because I was like trying to rush through and get it done. And I'm not gonna lie, I panicked a little bit. But once I calmed down from that little panic moment, I didn't fully calm down. I'm not gonna pretend like I was calm at, every, at any point at this stage in my studying. But I had calmed down enough to recognize that there were a few sections, like some of the oncology treatment pieces and cardiology that I missed the majority of the questions in so I then focused my study on those things that I missed during the practice exam. And because I was panicking, I recorded, I don't know if I would call it a pep talk, I recorded my feelings the night before, so I'm just gonna show you that now. So I'm taking my BC PPS exam in the morning and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not feeling that great about it. But you know what? I didn't feel great about the NAPLEX. I didn't feel great about either one of the MPJEs going through because with these board exams, there's just so much information. And so you're always gonna feel like there's more information that you don't know than you do know, which isn't true. For me, this exam is not very high stakes. I know that that may be different for some people taking this because it may be required for your job. It's not required for mine. I will get a small raise if I get it and then of course get the accreditation letters added to my name, which is nice, but it's not a must have. It's not gonna get rid of my job. I'm still gonna have a job where I make six figures after this. I have benefits. I have a retirement fund, all the good things. So that's how I feel about this exam. I am exhausted. I didn't sleep well last night. I'm hoping I sleep better tonight because I didn't sleep well last night. And I'll see you guys in the morning for the exam. Now let's talk about exam day. This exam is extremely long. It's very similar to the NAPLEX in that sense. So the first part is 100 questions and you have two and a half hours to go through it all. Then you're allotted a 30 minute break and then you have 75 more questions. And the time frame for that one is an hour and 53 minutes. Yes, very exact. So according to the Board of Pharmacy Specialties website, which is the organization that administers this exam, the majority of the questions are going to be multiple choice, but there's also like multiple select, there are potential video questions, there's like drag and drop options. So there are multiple different formats to the exam, but the majority should be a four option multiple choice question. And so my approach to taking the exam for both sections was the same. I went through and answered every single question just went through it once, gave my best answer, and then I took an unscheduled bathroom break just because I have a tiny bladder and I really needed to go to the restroom and it was hard to focus because I needed to go to the restroom. So I took my restroom break. The timer does keep going then if you're taking an unscheduled break, so keep that in mind. But I had plenty of time when I got to this point that I felt comfortable taking a break. Also, the bathroom was like 
really close. It was just like on the other side of the testing door. So I was not gone more than five minutes either time. And then after I came back in with a fresh set of eyes, I did a second review of all the questions, made sure I read everything correctly. A couple of questions I caught that I needed to change my answer because I missed a piece of the question the first time I read it. After that second review, I hit submit. For both sections, I had like five or 10 minutes left. I did go ahead and take my 30 minute break. So I just kind of sat out there, ate my snack, drank some water, got some fresh air, and then went back into the testing room. I didn't feel great about the exam when I left it. I felt that I like probably did good enough to pass, but there were a lot of things that I just didn't know or didn't remember. So I'll insert a clip of how I felt here. It was rough though, because I came out of there and there's definitely more than 50% of the questions that I was like iffy on. Obviously some of those I've gotten right. There's no way I didn't got all of those wrong. There were definitely some of them that I said that I was iffy on in my little count that I was more on the confident side than the unconfident side. So hopefully I will get enough to pass. I really don't know at this point though. I could have studied for two more months and I never would have looked at that information. Like, I don't even know where I go to find some of the information that was on there. So like, it is what it is. That doesn't necessarily mean anything about me and my abilities as a pharmacist. It's just one of those things that standardized tests do. I don't get it. Now for the results. So I took my exam on September 26th, which was the absolute last day I could schedule my exam to be taken. And the results for my exam were up on November 21st. So if you looked at the BPS website, they had dates available that like the test results were gonna come out maybe like a week ahead of time. And I actually had my results the day before they said I would. I wouldn't use that guide as a hard and fast rule because I know a lot of people who did get the results the day or two before what the website said. They do not email you your results. I think like several weeks after it was posted online, I did get a thing from them, like an email saying that I could order my certificate and that sort of stuff because I passed. But my initial result, I did not get an email from them. So if you want to know as soon as the results are up, you are going to have to go directly to the website and look that information up. It's really easy to do. You just log into that same portal you did your application in and the results show up just on that first home screen. So the exam has a score range of 200 to 800 with a 500 being passing and so when you open that home screen it just says like passed or failed and then there was some way I could see my score because I saw it initially but when I went back in I was trying to figure out what tab it was to tell you and I could not find my results with a score but I promise you it's somewhere and I also went ahead and ordered a certificate and a pin which is free to you. I mean, it's not free because you paid $600 for this exam, but you don't have to pay any more to get those things. And that did not arrive until January 26th. So now basically what happens is I am enrolled in the ASHP annual recertification and renewal course. So I'm going to be getting my 100 hours of CE over the next seven years in pediatrics through them. And I have officially added the letters BCPPS to the end of my name. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.